Have that! Oh my word! We've done it! We've only gone and done it! We've done it! Get in! Oh! Hello, welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be showcasing my full completion of Hollow Knight Void Heart Edition. If you've ever played the Hollow Knight game before, you will understand just how difficult that this can be. Some game review websites have likened it to the difficulty of Dark Souls, especially some of the late achievements that we'll get to in the game show how difficult that this game can actually be. The main three being Steel Heart and Steel Soul, which you get for completing the game on Steel Heart mode, and also collecting 100% whilst playing on Steel Heart mode. There's two more for speedrunning in less than 10 hours and less than 5 hours respectively. And then the final achievement, which we struggled to get, Embrace the Void. Complete all of the five pantheons in the game, but more about these later. So, to start off with, you have to complete the game on normal difficulty before you unlock Steel Soul mode. Whilst doing this, we also went for the 112% completion. Start off with 112% completion, you do drop into Hollow Nest and you drop into the tutorial section of this game you'll learn about some of the creatures here and what they drop is called geo Thank which you. is this game's currency you'll also see that there's platforming sections which is spread throughout the whole of hollow nest once you finish in the tutorial section you will be dropping into dirtmouth which is your home base and you can learn a little bit more about the lore of the game by talking to the people there once you've finished in dirtmouth you can drop into the first real section of this game where i guarantee the first time that you play it you will end up getting lost there's new creatures in this section which you can attack and will attack you and once you've finally figured out where you're going you'll stumble upon cornifer who's a cartographer and will give you a map to the area this map is a pretty useless until you spoke to his wife is elder who will sell you many many different things but the main thing that we need to focus on at this moment in time is the quill and the wayward compass once you purchase the compass you will get your first achievement for getting your first charm you can activate the charms by sitting at a bench and equipping them Charms in this game are used as power-ups, and each Compass. charm has a special unique ability that will help you in different situations. There are 40 charms that need to be collected and found throughout the map, and once you collect it all 40, you will receive an achievement. More than just charms that you need to find, and each collectible will have an achievement for collecting a certain amount, and then you'll also get an achievement for collecting every single one of that specific collectible, such as Mask Fragments. Mask Fragments are used to increase your health in this game. They're basically used as hearts, which allows you to take more damage. When you've collected your first four mass fragments, you'll get an achievement, and then there is 16 that you need to find throughout the map. With mass fragments increasing your health, you can also increase your soul reserve by collecting vessel fragments. The soul reserve and soul in this game is used for healing up and also using spells. There are 12 vessel fragments found in the map, and you'll get two achievements for collecting three and collecting 12. You can also find stag stations and maps of each area. The stag stations are used as fast travel to get from one place to another as fast as possible and it saves you having to walk there and walk back. You can also get a map of each area where you will need to find Cornifer in each section to be able to get the map for that section. You'll also need to find all of the grubs. There's 46 grubs hidden throughout all of Hollow Nest. And once you've found one, you just need to break them free and they will automatically return back to the grub father. The grub father will give you a reward each time you return a grub back to them. Later on in the game, you will unlock the dream nail. And the dream nail, you need to find certain locations where you can collect dream essence. And once you've collected this essence, you can return it back to Sia, who will reward you again. Getting back to the playthrough, the first thing that we need to do is defeat the first boss. We will get an achievement for doing this, and the first boss is a false knight. Once we've beaten him, we'll also unlock the first spell that we can use. The reason that we need to get Ventral Spirit is there's an enemy that's blocking the path, and you can only destroy this enemy with the spell. Once we've destroyed this enemy, and we start making our way through Green Path, we will find a path that leads to the Hunter's Journal. This is something that we can collect and records all of the monsters that we've located and killed. To complete the journal, you need to find and locate every single enemy that's in the game. Each enemy will have a certain amount that you will need to kill in order to complete the journal entry. Once you've completed the journal, you can return it back to the Hunter, who will give you an achievement and also give you the Mark of the Hunter. Progressing through Green Path, you will eventually come up to this section here where you have two options. Both of the options have an achievement attached towards either rescuing Zort or letting Zort die. Don't do what I did and use the playthrough where you save Zort as a Pantheon playthrough because Zort comes back as one of the bosses and it can be quite challenging to complete. After you've made your decision with Zort and you've come forward, you will come up to the next boss fight which is against Hornet. When you finish this battle, you'll defeat the Hornet and you would have got another achievement for defeating them. Hornet is one of the easiest boss fights in the game and once you progress a little bit forward, you will get the first skill. The first skill being Mothwing Cloak, which you can dash forwards. You can use this inside of battle and also outside of battle. We're resting through the game and still collecting all the collectibles as we move along, the charms, the grubs, the fragments. 
you will come up to Leg Eater, who sells you the best charms in the game. That being Fragile Strength, Fragile Greed and Fragile Heart. The main two being Fragile Strength and Heart, which give you more damage and more health, but they come at a cost. If you do die, then these do break and you'll have to return back to Leg Eater to fix them. The next thing we're going to do is get the Mantis Claw, which will help us climb up walls, which will also unlock new places, even in areas that we've already been to. You can visit Salubra, who helps you get more charms and equip even more charms at the same time by giving you more charm notches. As more charms that you collect, the more charm notches that you can purchase from her and the more charms that you can equip. Aren't that? Another NPC that is very beneficial to helping you progress through the game is the Nailsmith. The first upgrade that the Nailsmith can give you is increasing the damage that your nail does and it only costs Geo. To get the next upgrades from the Nailsmith, you will need to find Paylor. Once you've completed all of the upgrades with the Nailsmith, there are two options that you have again, each linked to another achievement. You can kill the Nailsmith with the Pure Nail, as he's done everything he can do and he wants to feel the blow of a mighty weapon. Or you can let the Nailsmith live and return him back to his brother. Again, on the next playthrough, we'll do the opposite to what we've done here. This achievement for defeating a boss that we've come across is defeating Soul Master. Soul Master is a little bit of a step up in difficulty and can take a few times to get used to. But once you've got used to the movement, it's pretty easy. After defeating the Soul Master, we'll also unlock Desolate Dive, which is a skill that can be used in battle to cause damage and can also be used outside of battle to break through barriers. With these skills, we're now going to return to Dirtmouth so we can buy the Lantern off Sly. This helps us get through the areas which are dark by lighting up the area so we can see where we need to go. The main section that this lights up is a path leading towards Crystal Peaks. We need to get to Crystal Peaks so we can get another skill, which is Crystal Heart, which allows us to jump forward and dash forward continuously until we bump into something. But the next boss that does have an achievement connected to it is Dung Defender, which we'll learn afterwards you can cheese with Desolate Dive to make him pop out of the ground and attack easier. We'll get the achievement of defeating this boss. The next skill that we unlock is Ismus Tia. This allows us to jump into Acid so we can access more of the map. After exploring and collecting everything along the way, the next fight we come to is to defeat the Mantis Lords, which especially in the Pantheon is an extremely satisfying fight. And once complete, the achievement will pop. The next boss achievement and the next skill that we obtain is to defeat the Broken Vessel. You can collect the next skill which is Monarch Wings, which is a double jump, helps you explore and can be very beneficial whilst using it in battle to get away from enemies. There's a Dream Nail on Broken Vessel to be entered into the Dream World by Lost Kin. In the Dream World, it doesn't count as a full death if you were to die in these battles. You will just be returned to where you use the Dream Nail on Broken Vessel. So your charms won't be broken and if you're on Steel Soul mode, your lives won't be ended. There. It won't be the end of the run. You'll get another achievement here for defeating Lost Kin, and once you defeated this battle, you will be returned to the main world and you can continue progressing through the game. Now we start to move through the game a little bit quicker, using the stag stations to travel back to areas we've been to but haven't been able to fully explore without the skills we've now gotten. We head to Teacher's Archives to take on Umu, who is a jellyfish that you will need Quirrell to help to take down. Once Umu has been defeated, we can gain access to Monmon -Mon, and with Quirrell's help, release him into the dream world. Here, you just have to start hitting Monmon -Mon till they explode and we can collect their essence, which also comes with an achievement. We have to find three of these bosses throughout the map in order to complete the game and take on the Hollow Knight. The next skill we get is Howling Raves. This is very powerful in battle as it can sometimes hit the enemies up to four times if the enemy is not pushed away or if the enemy doesn't move. Further along, we can get to the Blue Lake where we'll spend the final moments with Quirrell until he passes away. The next achievement that we get to is for defeating Hornet. Again, but this time she's a little quicker and a little stronger and has a different attack animation. But all in all, it's still not that difficult as we've already beaten her earlier on in the game. We can then upgrade the last of our skills, which is the dash, into Shade Cloak by stepping into this dark liquid and watching the little cutscene happen. Once the cutscene has happened, you will now have access to Shade Cloak, which is very powerful in battle. It helps you dash through enemies and you can also use it out of battle to access different areas again. The next stage of completion is to complete the Colosseum, where it's the first time we'll see Zola, which is part of the reason why we're saving in this playthrough rather than a Steel Soul playthrough. The first Colosseum is a Colosseum of Fools, which you unlock by speaking to this character here, and then it is just waves of enemies, but not specifically bosses. Once complete, you can get onto the second Colosseum the trial of the warrior and same again you work through waves of enemies to the boss and the final encounter to complete so back to progressing through the map the next boss that we take on is the collector if you do have some of the nail upgrades at this point and you can one hit everything that it spawns this boss is relatively easy once defeated the achievement will pop moving further along we can get to the watch knights but before we enter the fight we can take this secret entrance above the fight to knock down the chandelier. The chandelier lands on one of the watching knights. So instead of having to fight six of the watching knights, you now only have to fight five, which makes it a lot easier than having to fight all six. Once this fight is over, 
we start progressing a little bit further around and we get to Luri and the Watcher. Same thing here we did with Monmon. Mon. You use your dream nail to be transferred to the dream world. You keep hitting Lurian until you can collect their essence. And then this is the second of the three bosses we need to beat. A few things here that we need clearing up before getting to the next boss, such as collecting the grubs. There's a few essence trees to collect more essence. And then we're on to the Traitor Lord, which is one of the first bosses that when they hit you, you can hit the two masses of damage. After this fight, we then progress through the game until we reach these enemies, which are stalking Devo. These can only be hit from the front once the mask is opened and it's about to attack you. And these enemies will hit you for two health. After finding your way through this maze-like area, we'll come to the third boss that we need to kill to unlock the Hollow Knight, Hera the Beast. Exactly the same here. Use your dream nail, get transferred to the dream world, and collect the essence. We're now going to go back through the game and clear up four of the dream world bosses that we haven't been able to complete because we so haven't had the dream nail in order. The first being the dung defender, we just go back to the original place that we fought them and then we use the dream nail to be transferred to the dream world. The dung defender becomes a white defender, we do the same for the soul master which becomes a soul tyrant, we do the same for the false knight which becomes a failed champion. And then the last but dream boss being Grave Prince. So defeating every one of these bosses will also give you an achievement for each boss that you defeated. The next achievement that we went through is a bit more of a pain compared to the others. We need to take a delicate flower from the Grey Mourner and take it all the way across the map. Without the use of stag stations, without the use of trams and without the use of dream gates. As soon as you take any damage when you're trying to take this delicate flower, you will have horrible, to start again. Horrible. Which means going all the way back to the Grey Mourner, picking up another flower and trying again. We did try this a few times where we get getting hit, but then we follow the guide and you can actually follow the path that you were going to take, kill all the enemies, and as long as you don't sit at a bench, they will not respawn, which makes it a lot easier. There's only a few enemies that will respawn, such as these little jellyfish. This is the route that we've taken, and once you've taken it on that route, the last bit is a bit of a tricky platforming section, so we did practice this a few times, as we didn't want to get all the way and have to start again by getting hit by the vine. Once you dropped off the flower, you will get this achievement. After that painful achievement, we went and did the last Colosseum, the Colosseum of the Fool. And this can be really tricky because they take away the floor halfway through the battles and you have to cling onto the wall whilst attacking all your enemies. One of the main tactics being to try and pogo and use spells where possible and then dashing back to the wall so that you can keep wall jumping. Once you've completed this, this is all of the Colosseum achievements completed. Around this time, we notice our completion was over 100%. So instead of pushing on and getting 112%, we went to defeat the Hollow Knight before getting this achievement, which is completing the game at 100% in less than 20 hours. After defeating the Hollow Knight for the first time, we've so carried on getting the rest of the progress we needed for 112%. The next area we went to is the White Palace, which is an extremely difficult platforming section, which you need to have on. This charm regenerates your health, and it means that you can take it really slowly in the White Palace without actually dying. So every time you get hit, you just stand, let your health regenerate, as it only regenerates one health, and then you can push forward. The reason that the White Palace is so difficult is because the amount of obstacles that you have to get round and past and over and under and pogo on in order to get through. There's a lot of souls in the way. There's so many vines that as soon as you hit, that's an instant death. There's so many tricky double jumps over vines. Then you have to wait for the right timing to get over some more blades with a pogo on top of them. Then you have to wait for fast moving blades that will hit you straight away. Enemies that can attack you as well. And then finally once you Holy have shit. completed. Holy and then finally when you have completed you beat up the White King. And you pick up the charm that he drops. And that is your reward for completing the White Palace. The King Soul Charm. Now we're onto the last of the achievements where there's alternate options that you can pick in order to complete which is the Grim Troop achievement. On this playthrough, we decided to beat Nightmare King Grim, as I thought this would be harder to do on the Steel Soul and a bit riskier. First of all, you have to get the charm off Nightmare Grim. When you equip it, there'll be three fires around the map. You need to travel to these fires and defeat the bosses at these fires. There's three fires and then there's three bosses. Once you've done this, return to Grim, who will increase the power of the charm. You'll also light three more fires. When going to these fires, there's three more bosses here that will attack you and can be quite annoying to defeat. They also do two hearts of damage. Once you've destroyed all three of these bosses, go back to Grim, who will then initiate a fight with you. And the first time we played Grim, we didn't think we'd ever beat him. After continually trying and practicing and getting closer, we finally beat Grim. Then you can use a Dream Nail to take you on to Nightmare King Grim, which is twice as hard because it does two lots of damage rather than one, and everything's done really quick. But once you've managed to beat this boss, you've completed the Grim Ritual, and you will get an achievement for all your hard work. Something a little less challenging now, and locating all of the areas that Mr. Mushroom spawns in, you just need to find him on the map. We used a guide to make it a little bit 
quicker. And all you need to do is talk to him in each of these sections. The next time you beat the game by defeating Hollow Knight, you'll get a secret ending. Now we're on to what I like to call the fun part of the game. Thankfully, out of the five pantheons, only the first four count towards 112%. The fifth one doesn't add a percentage onto the completion. So now we're going to go through all of the first four pantheons. First one being Pantheon of the Master, which faces you off against these enemies. The only real challenge here is learning the Brothers Oro and Natal Fighters. It's the first time you've ever come across these. The same again with the second pantheon, the Pantheon of the Artist. This is different bosses, and these are the bosses that you fight against. Again, Shio, the last boss, being the only hard one, as it's the first time you've fought this boss. Ooh. Each time he does an attack, the colour of the papers does change, and then you'll know what attack he's choosing to attack you with. Once you've defeated Pantheon 2, it's on to Pantheon 3. Pantheon of the Sage, which is against these bosses. The difficulty here is much harder than the first two. There's some really tricky bosses, such as Grim, Not you. Zolt, Umu, especially without Quirrell. Umu, without the help from Quirrell, now spawns jellyfish that you have to hit into Umu to get it into the stage where you can actually do damage against the boss. The final boss of this pantheon is Sly, which has, which is a very difficult fight as there's no time to heal or there's no time to learn the next bosses. He's very quick and he will attack you a lot, so you need to make sure that you just dodge and hit it once. Hitting Sly more than once can cause you to get hit because he will retaliate very quickly. We're now on to Pantheon 4, which you'll face up against these bosses, most of these being late game bosses, and Markov. The less said about Markov, the better. But the final boss being Pure Vessel, who does two lots of damage, and is a massive upgrade in well, difficulty well. compared to just the standard Hollow Knight. But once done all four of the Pantheons, we're at 112% completion, and we just have to finalise the run. We need to go and collect the Void Heart Charm, which is given by equipping the King Soul Charm and reaching this area of the Abyss. The ground will open up and then you'll be entering a maze-like section you just need to follow around until you get to this area and hit this object with the Dream Nail. A quick cutscene will play and you'll be buried under bodies. Make your way to the top and your Void Charm is yours along with the achievement. Now we just need to go and finish the game a few more times by defeating the last boss, the Hollow Knight. When we get to the area, we'll see Hornet outside. When we start to defeat the Hollow Knight, Hornet will jump in and help us, but they get injured in this boss fight. I have to keep attacking the Hollow Knight until the battle is completed. Upon the completion of this battle, we'll get three achievements here. One for beating the Hollow Knight with Hornet by our side, one for finally achieving 112% completion, and the third for aiding the Herald in moving on, which is the Mr. Mushroom achievement. Guy, so. Now we're to the final objective we have to complete in this playthrough before we come back and complete the Pantheon fight, which is we have to beat the Hollow Knight for a third time. Again, Hornet will be stood outside, and again, once you start to defeat the Hollow Knight, but this time we can use the Dream Nail on the Hollow Knight to be transferred to be playing against the big boss of the game, against Radiance, which is the final boss of the game. Once we've defeated Radiance, we'll have the final boss of the game completed. And that's his playthrough, more or less completed, by the Pantheon Fire that we'll do towards the end. Now we still have eight more achievements left to get to complete the game, two of which we can knock out in one speed run of the game. I complete the game in less than five hours and less than 10 hours respectively. For these achievements, you only have to have an any percent completion, so you only need to destroy the three bosses to unlock the Hollow Knight and beat the Hollow Knight on the first one. We use the guide for a quick route. Oh. The last playthrough that we have that have achievements linked to them is the Steel Soul playthrough, where you get an achievement for completing the game on Steel Soul mode, and you get an achievement for completing the game at 100% completion on Steel Soul mode. Not everything does count towards a completion or a percentage of a completion, and once we've got to 99% achievement, we went and killed the final boss to get 100% achievement. We basically followed the same walkthrough that we've done to complete 112%, but as soon as we started hitting 100%, we went towards the bosses to finish the game. The only difference Tools. being that we left up to die, we killed the Nailsmith, and we banished the Grim Troop. When we got into high 90% of the completion, we started to do the easier quest so we could increase the percentage as safely as possible, so we went back and did the flower quest. Now finally, we're on to the last achievement, which is completing Pantheon 5, which is by far the hardest achievement in the game. Not only is it difficult to complete all of the bosses, but each run that you do attempt can take upwards of 45 minutes, meaning that there's an investment in time that you have to take in order to complete it. We did attempt to just keep running through Pantheon 5 and getting as far as possible, such as Sly, as soon as we got to Sly we kept dying. Then the hardest part of the Pantheon is that there's a few bosses with a run with no bench in between and they can be quite difficult. This starts off with Markov because Markov has no floor so you have to use these little platforms to get around the arena. And with his random style of attacks it's very difficult to predict the next attack or where it's going to come from. It wasn't until one of our Twitch chatters suggested sliding on the wall and staying on the wall whilst he was performing his sword attacks. Then when Markov does this 
animation, you could go over and keep hitting him a little bit safer. Straight after Markov, we do come up to Zolt, and this is another tricky battle. We usually are on about half health, and there's not much time here to heal up, and Zolt can still be quite difficult to complete. Thankfully, after Zolt, we're on to the failed champion, which we can use as breathing space, because each time you knock him down, you can keep using the Dream Nail to increase your soul. After the third knockdown, you can fill up your health and fill up your soul, so you have full health and full soul going into Nightmare King Grim. So Nightmare King Grim does do two hearts of damage each time it hits you. However, we have done this fight quite a few times and the practice on the normal playthrough and the practice on the Steel Soul playthrough, we did manage to get through this relatively easy. Although we did get hit quite a few times. When you have beat Nightmare King Grim, you do get a bench, two but then you are facing off against the last two bosses. We needed to beat Pure Vessel so we can get onto the Absolute Radiance fight. Even though we knew oh we weren't going to beat the Absolute Radiance fight the first time we fought them, we wanted to get to them so then we could practice them in the Hall of Gods. In the Hall of Gods, you could practice each god so you can understand its attack animations and practice it so then you know when you come to it in the Pantheon, you know you'll be able to complete it. After practicing each boss and running us a few times through the Pantheon, we was struggling. But what you can do is run through all that you completed previously and you can complete them again, but this time with more restrictions, what are called bindings. Each binding you do adds on towards being able to increase your health each time you're on a Pantheon and you get a bench stitch. You need to have completed the Pantheons with a total of eight bindings. You can do these all at once. So you could do four per Pantheon or you can do them one at a time. After you've got eight, you will get three blue hearts each time you hit a bench stage in the Pantheon. If you get 12, you'll get four blue hearts. And if you get 16, you'll get five blue hearts. The bindings that you can run the Pantheons with is Nail Binding, which lowers your nails damage. Charm Binding, which takes off all your charms. Soul Binding, and you cannot get full soul and then the final being health binding which caps your health to five hearts after doing all the bindings and practicing absolute radiance we went on another run we got back up to markov and we had a relatively good markov fight we got onto zolt and we beat zolt we healed up at the failed champion we took down nightmare king grim after getting hit quite a few times we healed back up at the bench and then we took on the final two bosses the first of the bosses being pure vessel where we took a lot more damage than we wanted to and we only just got through the fight however when you do start the absolute radiance fight you do start with full health which does make it slightly easier but it is still a really difficult fight once absolute radiance has been taken down the game is complete we have every single achievement and what i can say is this has been the most difficult yet rewarding game that we have ever completed we are currently streaming the next game we're going to be playing which has been suggested by the viewers in chat Ooh. if you have any suggestions please pop it in the comments below and if you've liked the video please consider hitting the subscribe button and any comments and feedback is greatly appreciated feel free to catch me over on twitch at the smiley goodbye